Hi, welcome to Real Film Snobs. I'm Angela Yeager. And I'm Brian Michael. Today we have a very special episode. Every episode is special. But today we're coming out of the closet. No, oh, we're cleaning out the closet. We're playing catch up. Uh, actually, there's been a lot of films over the, this last year that Angela and I haven't had a chance to review on the show. And since um, there's not much in the multiplexes right now, either that we haven't seen or that's worth seeing, we figured we'd just play a little catch up on today's. Uh, but as always, if you're watching us on YouTube, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and then hit the little bell button. It'll give you notifications and it'll also make the Oscars that much longer because us as film snubs love to watch the Oscars and it's for us, not everybody else. Yes. Good point. Uh, that's here, here. <laughs> a clip you saw at the top of the show is for a Cold War. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, by director, hold on, Powell Palowski. Palo Oh, I had it earlier. Paul Lekowski, excuse me, uh, who uh, is famous on our show anyway for uh, directing a, a film called Ida a few years back that I think made both our top tens list. I, I know it made, made mine. mine. Yeah, made by both of ours. And uh, this is a, his a new offering. It's a uh, music director who falls in love with his singer and tries to convince her to leave communist Poland for France. Uh, now, of course, you're going to know about this film because it's the other film uh, that's uh, nominated for an Academy Award uh, for Best Director. That's in black and white. So there's the two black and white movies. One's in Mexico, this one's in Poland. And uh, it's a wonderful, passionate, kind of thro old throwback. To feels like a night, it feels like a, a 60s film to me. That these, mm, these yeah. two people who just France. fall madly <laughs> in love and you immediately mm -hmm. feel the chemistry between them. Uh, Joanna Kellig and Tomas Cott, um, who are absolutely fantastic. Now, the great thing about black and white, what that does is it really shows the characters, characteristics of your face. If there's any type of wrinkle, if there's any type mm -hmm. of mole, if there's any type of, certainly expressions are really pop on the screen in this, especially several times when they cut to just the audience and it's just a sea of faces and we're just focusing on one of them because they, they're the mm -hmm. ones who stick out because of the reaction they're giving. It's it's such a beautiful movie to look at. And several times in the movie, I just kind of found myself just looking in the corners of the, of the, of the frame. And I had my problems with Roma. This one, I certainly did not. The exteriors as well as the interiors just look absolutely Interesting. amazing. So you like the look of this better? Oh, I love, right? yes, I mm -hmm. did. And it's so easy to just, these two who just immediately have, uh, you know, such great chemistry and um, following, uh, following through the years uh, of their love story, it's a, it's a wonderful film. Yeah, it's very interesting. You know, the film it reminded me of a little bit, strangely, is Jules and Jim by Truffaut. In that, you know, it's about, it, ha it has these, um, the editing of it is very interesting. It's almost like little vignettes of their relationship mm -hmm. over the years where it cuts in and out, and you're not always sure exactly how much time has passed, and then they come together again, and it, and it reminded me of that a little bit. Um, and you can see, yes, because of the gorgeous look of it, why he was acknowledged as director, um, yeah. although that would be actually more cinematography than the directing, but you know, it, it does have a beautiful look and much more traditional black and white than Roma. The length is very interesting for a movie that in a way has an epic scope, yes. um, going from right after World War II, um, when it became Communist Pola, up until the 60s, and uh, the movie, I think, clocks in at about 80 minutes. Seven, something like that. In the 80 range. Yeah. So very short, under 90 the Angela, minutes. The Angela range is what I call it. Yeah, Angela well, likes it, like 90, it was, 90 minutes. Almost like a film noir, <laughs> which I think would be great, but it's not a film noir, even though it has a little bit of a look of a film noir, but it is very much a, you know, a romance in the tradition of a Casablanca or something about this, you know, this couple coming together, falling yeah. out, falling back in love. So I did really enjoy this film. I, I, you know, to me, it's not a masterpiece. So it won't make my top 10. It, partially, it's just comparisons. His last film was so amazing yeah. and it didn't move me as much emotionally and maybe it was something to do with the length. I think part of it was, you know, their relationship at times was a little frustrating. It's a little hard to watch people that are in sort of these kind of toxic type relationships. Like, you know, when, you know, at one point she makes a decision to do something that just seems kind of dumb and and it kind of makes everything have more of a tragic yeah, arc sure, sure. without giving it too much away and I just that was really frustrating to watch because I thought why would you do that and then of course we know he's going to follow her and then that leads to his arc then being tragic and that's always hard to watch so uh, but I thoroughly enjoyed it I can yeah. definitely recommend it are you giving it four stars? No I'll give it three and a half. Three and a half for me is, as well yeah yeah it's, yeah. 
it's a wonderful film. You know, I just can't get, uh, you know, seeing black and white on the big screen, certainly it's going to be streaming soon, as everything will be. But um, <laughs> seeing on the big screen really is the, is the way to see this, especially with black and white. We just had two amazing films this last year in black and white. It's, it's such an amazing, it's, it's, it's and wonderful. And this is also nominated for Best Foreign Language Film, and that is one of the strong categories this yes. year, I would say. Roma, um, Shoplifters, um, in any other year, that one of those films would have been easily just, it would have been, a, yeah. yeah, it would just been like, oh, that's obvious. But now yeah. you have, you know, Cold War, and we haven't reviewed it on the show yet, but Capernaum, which I was fortunate to get to see, which is also amazing. So, I mean, the, 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 uh, the nominees in this category are particularly strong, But we all know who's going to win that one. Well, I would think it would be it's Roma. It's going to be Roma. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be the one but. that's going to win that. We've already covered that in a previous episode. But, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, there's one we can highly recommend. I think I'm going to find that a lot in this episode. Okay. So, now we're going to look at a clip for our next review, which is for Adam McKay's Vice. Let's take a look. All right. So, that clip was for um, uh, Adam McKay's Vice. I can't like to say, oh, I should say Academy Award winning director. Adam winning McKay. or nominated? Yeah, no, well, he, was nom he won an Oscar for his writing, but Academy Award winning writer and director, yes. Adam McKay. He also did Anchorman, you knew yes, that, Yes, right? I know about Anchorman. Anchorman. Step, You're going to keep reminding me about okay. Anchorman. What an amazing uh, uh, comedic uh, presence he is as well. So uh, this is uh, his newest offering, uh, his newest drama, and this is uh, what tells the story mm -hmm. of uh, Dick Cheney's life. And uh, whether you're a fan or not, whether you go in there and uh, excited for it, or or if you're someone who had to see W years ago and had to go in there and grit and grind your teeth and sit through it to see what Oliver Stone had to say about certain um, polarizing public figures. Uh, this one actually tells a very interesting gambit. doesn't tell him as mm -hmm. usually they would show as a child or a really young child. I thought this kind of really started when he was a younger man um, working and meeting his wife and kind of going from there and her being the catalyst. There's a conversation that she sits down, Amy mm -hmm. Adams' yeah. best... Mm -hmm. Best and unfortunately, the only best scene in this movie. She is not given enough. It's the only crime. This crime in this movie is that Amy Adams is not given enough because she Very can carry a lot more weight. Yeah. But when she sits and tells him, "You got to straighten up, or I'm going to find somebody else because I can," I really enjoyed that. And he kind of turns his life life around. Ooh. In a way, <laughs> to become almost kind of makes you wish you just stayed as a drunkie a little bit. <laughs> oh <laughs> boy! Well, you know it's fascinating because we, you know, we lived through this era, and so we know, of, you know, the history, outcome yes. and, and its recent history. But there were still some things that kind of went, oh, is that how that happened? Oh, is that what happened? Well, really? that's fascinating, interesting. I didn't know enough about uh, enough about some of the stuff, the behind the scenes that he had done. I knew that he was pulling a lot of strings, there was a lot of strings there. Yeah. And along the way, we get to see Rumsfeld, who I, I got to say, I was really excited to see because Steve Carell plays him. He's and great. And he is fantastic. We talked about in the Oscar episode, you said he should have been nominated. And he well, is. Well, if someone he was is going so to be from this, good this movie, this I actually movie. thought yeah. he was one I of my Sam favorite I Sam Rockwell parts. was good, but I don't think it was kind of strange well, for him to get nominated Well, a movie that's sort Steve of been Carell. tagged as a comedy slash drama, like The yeah. Big Short, Adam McKay's previous movie, and it's done in that vein, although I don't think it's as funny as The Big Short. Um, you know, I think Carell finds that spirit. You know, Rumsfeld, he, you know, on one hand, yes, he's a problematic character and he does some horrible things, but he's also very funny, especially in the uh, his interactions with Cheney because he's so different from him. Um, he's yeah. like the opposite. You know, Cheney's stoic and very matter-of-fact, and Rumsfeld's sort of like this, you know, heckler, old boys club type guy. So the stuff that I thought was most interesting, because that was the part I didn't know, uh, most of the recent history stuff, you know, for political wonks like myself was not news. The stuff from the Ford administration was actually interesting to me because I didn't know as much about yeah. Cheney's previous political life. So that was very interesting. Um, but I did feel like this is one of the, you know, this is not a great film. Um, and I think it's actually weaker than The Big Short um, yeah. in terms of, and they even admitted up front at the very beginning of the movie, they say Cheney is one of the most unknown modern political figures. He's kept everything about his life extremely secretive. Because of that, it's very hard to make a movie around someone that you really don't know what their internal motivations are. You don't know much about their emotional frame of reference. Bale, I think, is incredible. I think yeah, he's very good. Yeah, but I mean, do you want to have one of those things where they show the child and his father hits him and that's what no, motivates the rest of his life? I mean, we've that, seen that movie a hundred times. But even the switch that he makes in the film that you talk about, other than his wife urging him to become someone, we don't know what kind of gets him from no, good he, old boy, drinking beer, and getting DUIs to yeah, but then major when he political sits, opera. But when he sits there and hears Rumsfeld speak and they say, well, what party are you going to meet with? He goes, whatever that guy is. And that was a huge turning point. Right. 
and think about it in our history. And you're really thinking that he was at the White House and he didn't even know what party oh, he you was know, It's a fascinating to see it that way, and I yeah. like that. It's, that's, that's, that's interesting storytelling. I enjoyed this film. Yeah, I just felt like for the cast, especially Amy Adams was underutilized. Sam Rockwell yeah. didn't do much for me in the part of W. Um, again, Christian Bale is phenomenal as Cheney, and he looks like him, and as much as you want to see, you know, two hours of Cheney on screen, I mean, you really feel like he embodies certain elements of him, especially the way he sits in a room and doesn't say anything and is just watching what everyone else is mm -hmm. saying. And he's, and the wheels are turning the whole time. I think Bell just re is really brilliant in those scenes in particular. So I can recommend it. It's just not a four star film. Yeah. Oh, me. no, no. This is a three star film for yes, me. I, yeah. I like it. Three stars as yeah. well. So. Yeah. so we agree again. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a crime. It's all right. People want to see us fight and slug uh, it out. No. Well, like we'll give old, it a minute here. It's coming up. Days. Okay. Oh, you think so? Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> we'll move on to our next film, which is Private Life. And this is about a couple uh, whose relationship is strained while they undergo multiple fertility treatments over a number of years um, to try and conceive. The film stars Paul Giamatti and Katherine Hahn in just, you know, what a, a brilliant coup of casting. Uh, the film is by Tamara Jenkins. A wonderful director who only seems to make one movie like every 10 years and then each time she makes it it's fantastic and I yeah. don't know if it's as much because she's a female director and can't get work or if she just chooses to only work once every 10 years her previous films included Savages with Laura Linney and Philip Seymour Hoffman fantastic which feels like forever ago yeah and previously that Slums of Beverly Hills which is one of the films yeah. that helped kind of launch Natasha Lyonne who's of course getting big you know right again having a resurgence um, with her TV series and both of those are great films um, there's also a supporting uh, cast Molly Shannon in a dramatic role wow. as um, the, a mother named Cynthia and John Carroll as Charlie. And um, in a, a young actress I didn't know at all who plays their sort of niece, step-niece, um, Sadie, is Kaylee Carter, who I was not familiar with. And I mm. mentioned you, I thought she looked a little bit like a young Natasha Leone with the red hair and, and just the spunkiness, and she's fantastic. You know, as someone who, for this subject matter, this is not my favorite. You know, this is, I mean, I think yeah. it's, I give the... This is a sitcom. This is a, this is a sitcom or a comedy uh, uh, Plot. Plot, sure, sure. But it's not done like that. It's no. intelligent. Yes. This is a movie about smart, artistic people who are undergoing some things that are not always likable. You're not always expected to like them. And you're not always able... The thing I thought was interesting is I don't think the director's necessarily saying we have to sympathize with them all the time. Because I think they go a little too far. Oh, yeah. And I think the director is Well, the amount of money just... they were throwing at someone point in time, we were like, oof. Wow, you can afford doing something like that, and, and they really can't. But friend? they're just yeah. yeah, they're really stretching it. But they become obsessed with this thing that they feel yes. like they have to achieve now, and they're going to any lengths to achieve yes. it. Yes, this is the you know, and, and, and my favorite filmmaker is Woody Allen. Give or take, however you feel about him now, but as a filmmaker, he's one of my favorites, and this is probably the best Woody Allen movie esque movie I have seen in a very long time, and I mean that as in a, in a great way. Um, this is such a thoroughly enjoyable film in terms of just having smart people. Yes, they've got books stacked on the window, which really bothered me. I was going to ruin those books. But I always <laughs> like films when they have the little, they have their New York apartment and that's what they have on the wall. But these are very intelligent people who are very caught in a very, you know, an emotional web. It's, they get so focused on that. Even at one point in time, they were like, you know, when was the last time we were intimate? When was the last time we did anything for each other when we've just been concentrating on this and the mechanical and um, uh, medical way of getting out, getting there, yeah. trying to get to this goal? We've kind of lost sight of one another. And that was very, there's a lot yeah. of real conversations that they'll have. And there were several where they had, a com you know, coming out of the doctor's office and having a conversation where one just stops and goes, are you kidding me? And they have an argument in the street. And I could totally see that happening. That's very realistic. Yeah. And it's that's nice to see. And I know that we want to watch movies to escape. I know that, you know, we want to see explosions and see superheroes. And, and I get that because I enjoy those things. But sometimes it's really, really nice to just to see, you know, you're kind of looking into your next door neighbor's life because this is really things that re real things that happen to real people without actually peeping in your neighbor's yard because that's creepy. Yeah, don't do that. But uh, yeah, and a great yeah. cast. Great Catherine cast. Hahn never gets enough. Never, she ever, finally ever. gets a starring role, though. Oh, and fantastic. So and more good. Molly Shannon. If I had a criticism of this film, it was like, you needed more Molly Shannon. Come yeah. on, more of that, because she really good. rocks. Well, and at first I thought, oh, she's like the unlikable bomb. But as she went on, you thought, well, you know, she's got a different perspective. She's protecting she's her daughter. Point. And yes. her daughter's getting involved. And she's kind of seeing these yep. people going down this road and thinking I, they're going too far. Exactly. And, you know, it's another perspective. And, again, as someone who can't relate with this, this theme, could care less about it myself, not interested 
in oh sure you, you, we've made yeah. decisions in our life yeah, yeah you and i We're both good. but but i could still but i still was fascinated yeah. and there with them every step of the way so oh, yeah. i'm giving you this four stars yeah you are two or three and a half Oh, you hesitated. You hesitated. Mm, yeah, it's three and a half for me. I okay. really wanted to do four, four, but you stars. know what? I, I had forgotten about it. I looked at went, Private Life? What movie was that again? I looked and don't one. let oh, his Woody Allen right. reference turn you off no, if you're no, worried no. about so it. Woody, but I would no, say, but I'm talking 70s, said to you, 80s, early 90s but I'm Woody Allen. As Good directed stuff. by a woman, too, because this is very much from, I mean, the Katherine Hahn character gets a lot of. Um, I, I don't see it. I feel it as like that. her perspective is just as weighty as Paul Giamatti's. I would say this was just a finely directed film, whether it was by whatever point. I thought it did a great job of showing both sides well yeah they're both it's not it it's not more on her side yeah. or his side yeah. that's for sure yeah no, that's for sure. i don't see the world that way angela oh, yes i'm sure you sound like one of those yeah. okay well anyway we'll move Ooh, on minding careful. the gap <laughs> is our next film and uh, this is a documentary that follows three young men who with a shared love of skateboarding who must confront shared trauma as they grow up um, and the film um, actually stars one of the young men. So he sort of sheds light on himself. His name is, he's the director of the film, Bing. And he also looks at his two friends, Zach and um, Kier, I think is how you pronounce his name. And, you know, at the beginning of this movie, you know, we watched it not knowing, I didn't know anything about it. It was on nope. a bunch of lists. Yep. It's nominated Everyone for an Academy talking Award about it. for Best Documentary. It's yep. on a ton of critics. It's top yep. number one for the New York Times, in case you're interested, along with a couple other documentaries. Um, so, you know, we were interested, and it first starts, and I thought, oh, it's just a skateboarding movie. Well, we've seen these before. We've seen skateboarding documentaries, and, and it slowly transpires into some a totally different movie yes. and that I was blown away by and, um, and becomes very much a look at masculinity in the modern world, young men and how they become men in our society, what happens to young men and the way that they're not allowed to express emotions and how that traumatizes them. And he gets into all these sort of things and he has access to his friends because they're his friends that a regular outside person wouldn't have, which is amazing. Well, it's, yeah, you really feel as though we kind of just fumbled into this because he's just, you know, just videotaping, just videotaping his videotaping friends, his a friends. bunch of skateboarding and they're having a lot of fun. And then you hit your 20s and you become grown-ups or you're trying to grapple with becoming a grown-up or trying to decide how you're going to be as a grown-up and then certain paths are chosen for you and everyone kind of splinters and goes their separate ways or, or in directions and it's fascinating. Um, this was, this is a, 2019's coming up, we're, this is another Up series is coming up by the end of the year and I'm stoked about this. And this is another film that I kept thinking about. It was like, gosh, I want to see these guys again. Yeah. I really want to see these, whether it's five years, whether it's seven years, whether it's 10, I want to come back and see where these guys are at because um, he does such a great job of really just pulling, because they are his friends. So they're, when they're looking at the camera, they're, you know, it's, you kind they're of feel included in that. They're talking to him, yeah, but they feel like, like you're, you're talking to you, you're in there with yeah. them. Mm -hmm. And so you, the stakes are really high because you feel like you've bought into this. Now, originally when we watched this movie and I had texted you a couple of times about it, I was like, gosh, you know, I love this film, but... I felt as a film, it just didn't feel quite complete, and it's not fair to it because it, it isn't. Because, like I said, their, their lives continue on. So I, I have, I've been thinking about it, and I am going to give it four stars because I've thought about this movie over and over. And anyone who will listen, especially my poor coworkers who don't watch the show, um, you got a Hulu? There's this documentary. You got to watch this about these kids with skateboarding. No, hold on, wait, wait, wait. But it's about the how they grow up, yeah. and it's how they go on, da, 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 da. and it's fascinating. And you know, all the podcasts and the reviews I listen to, everyone's just. They go on and they come obsessed about this film and, and yeah, it's really yeah, easy I to would, do. It's a I was shocked it was nominated for an Oscar for Best Documentary. I would be happy wow. if it won. If because, it wins, yeah. It's because, already won by getting nominated. It's just I know, that people it's his, see it. It's his first film and here he, he takes this footage, but it's it, it's really worthy, I think. Does because a great I job. have thought about it a lot as well, yes. like you have. So definitely a four star film. They for gotta me. follow up though. Yeah, it would I be really interesting. Really got to see what happens. That's just of course they would be more self conscious going into it next time. Yeah, they'll get that. Yeah. Are you excited about the up? I'm, I'm really excited yeah, about the I'm up very series. Excited. I'm going another one. Okay, so we'll move on to our next movie, which is A Night Comes On. Uh, this is a, a film by Jordana Spiro, Spiro or Spiro. And uh, this is about a young woman who gets out of a juvenile detention on the eve of her 18th birthday, and uh, she seeks revenge on her father. I think I can say why she's revenge because it happened. They explain it early in the movie. I don't want to spoil it, do I? Uh, I, wouldn't spoil, say. I wouldn't spoil it. So let's it. just say she's going for revenge on her father. And. Um, I, I, this film just kind of came out of left field. I really enjoyed this film. It ended up being on some lists and getting well reviews, so a good review. So we, we took a look at it, and um, I actually found it on streaming because it's been out long enough. And uh, her name is a uh, uh, Dominique character's Fishback. name. Well, it's oh, the Angel character. is her character's name, played by Dominique Fishback, who is 
fantastic. Great actress. And yeah. then her younger sister, who ends up tagging along with her from this day, because they decide to go out on a day and, and kind of spend the day together, and she's mm -hmm. also trying to find out where her father lives. Her younger sister, played by Tatum Marilyn Hall, is amazing. Right, both this, great performances. Oh, this young lady was yeah. born for the screen. She is absolutely fantastic. You know, I should have told. I should have said she should have been nominated for an Academy Award because she is absolutely incredible. Well, either of these actresses, I think, would have been great. Well, the but, firm, but I really enjoyed the younger sister movie. because she really, she really kind of pushes things and um, ends up having to push the the, the journey that they're on. She's going a little bit in one the heart of the movie because and Dominic Fishback's is. character is a little. She's tough, you know. She's yes. kind of hardened, and her sister. Hasn't had pulling that happen her back, back in then. there, mm -hmm. trying to have this normal life, trying to do this thing because since her sister's been gone, she's been dreaming about the, doing these certain things, and now she's back and she's wanting to do this, and doesn't quite understand why you know what's what's going on here, and there are some amazing you know beautiful scenes, there's some frustrating scenes, there's some very scary scenes. That beach scene is you think about Roma being on the beach. Here's a beach scene also yeah. for you that right. just I stopped my heart just leapt out of my chest and it was just like what kind of movie is this going to be because something happens you're thinking wait wait are we going to go for tragedy is this what's really going to happen here is it just going to be something for fun yeah. what's going on and it was like run run too. there's a lot of quiet <laughs> yes. you know so it sounds like we're talking about oh she's seeking revenge and so when I read that description I thought oh it's a revenge thriller no it's not so if you go in thinking that you got to be in no, a no it's not like revenge move. the movie revenge no it's not no, like not that at all. all no no it's very it's very um I don't want to say slow going because that will make people think it's subdued. It's subdued. And it's subdued. Just, that's she, a nice word. She's somebody who certainly has been plotting. She knows exactly what she's going to do. She knows how she's going to get things done, and she is patient, but not too patient because she wants to. She's going to get there, and she wants to settle things, um, which I thought was very interesting. And and the end of her journey was was fascinating as well. Um, boy, I just. There's so some films that go under the radar, but dang. Yeah, really? and this one really did. I mean, I don't know how anybody saw it. Other, I mean, I would not have known about it if I didn't look at those critics lists, and I don't know if anybody saw this movie besides critics, which is really too bad, um, because Dominique Fishback uh, is an actress I've discovered through Dave, the great work of David Simon, the TV um, writer, and he's cast her in The Deuce and some other programs of his. And so when she came on in the film, I thought, oh, someone gave her a starring role in a film, and because she's just a really interesting actress and yeah. really good. And as you said. The, the young woman that plays her sister is also fantastic and it's really the whole movie's built around them I mean there isn't much more no. to it in terms of other characters there's a few you know there's like a sleazy guy that comes in there's a few minor characters but the film is really focused on these two sisters which I really like and this is a directorial debut which is amazing to me that this Pretty is the, uh, Jordana Spiro's first film I mean, she did a couple shorts but first feature length film and very impressive I think so I'm giving it three and a half stars yeah so am I I, I really enjoyed this one and it, it's, it's something you really got to look for and find what I watched on streaming I cut it on streaming yeah depending on what kind of subscriptions you have you can stream it for free so uh, let's take a look so we both well you know this is the that's a Brian episode a lot of three and a half stars there uh, we both can recommend Cold War we both can recommend Vice uh, we both uh, recommend Private Life you I highly recommend it, four stars, it. So, yeah. we both highly recommend Minding the Gap four um, stars as well for me fantastic I think it's as one well of the best for of the year. yep uh, hopefully it'll make my top 10 I think it should and then uh, night comes on as always uh, you can uh, what do we do we can uh, follow us on Facebook or you like us on Twitter is it the other way around <laughs> oh that makes me sound old subscribe to us on YouTube you can listen to us on KMUZ you can watch us here on CCTV in Salem as well as Silverton and uh, Colorado or Colorado Corvallis I can't uh, read my own handwriting that would be Plus, cool I'm making though a trip out to Colorado. sponsor us That's what I was in Colorado <laughs> uh, then, of course, we have our basic sponsors, our wonderful crew, my fantastic co-host, and you, the viewer at home. Thank you for watching, and as always, have a great day and great movies.